Hi, I'm Dr. Ken Miller, and this is uh, part of a series of, of dialogues with, uh, uh, with professionals and researchers and uh, uh, people that, that work with cancer survivors, talking about some of the important issues. I'm here with Dr. Mitch Gallant, who is uh, a, a social scientist and a clinician and uh, a vice president of the Wellness Community, which is a uh, group that provides wonderful care for, for cancer survivors throughout the country. Mitch, thanks for being with us. Oh, I'm gl glad to be here as well, Ken. Let's talk about the, uh, the, the topic of post-traumatic stress syndrome. I mean, sure. it's, it's, it's a term that's used a lot in talking, you know, about war veterans. What is post-traumatic stress? So, so again, the, the simplest way to outline post-traumatic stress is this experience of what we call intrusion and avoidance. Mm -hmm. Intrusion is like having nightmares about, and, and we're talking today really about cancer survivors. Mm -hmm. And the idea that, that the diagnosis of cancer really is a multiple traumatic event. There's the diagnosis, mm -hmm. there's the treatment, there's the side effects of treatment, there's the threat of recurrence, there's recurrence, mm -hmm. there's the pain or fatigue associated with those symptoms and having to face death. So while we think of post-traumatic stress disorder as something very, very specific, for cancer patients, the way we need to really think about it, there's only 6 to 10% of patients actually have that full-blown PTSD. Mm -hmm. But that's, I, I think it's too limiting. The way we're talking about it now is that now that cancer is a chronic illness, that folks with cancer are going to be having multiple diagnoses of cancer. Mm -hmm. They're going to be dealing with these impacts all over their lives. And that it's a far more robust way of thinking about it because this is what we're experiencing and this is what we're seeing with survivors, so both this intrusion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and avoidance. Intrusion, what does that look like? Intrusion is, are these nightmares that, that whenever you're turning around, you, you keep hearing cancer. Mm -hmm. So it's constantly bombarding you. Mm -hmm. Well, avoidance is an attempt to not have to be bombarded by those experiences. So you no longer drive by the hospital after treatment. You kind of avoid mm -hmm. those conversations on the TV. If, if cancer comes up, you shut it off. Mm -hmm. So this process of in intrusion and avoidance becomes a, a, a clue that a cancer patient mm -hmm. is struggling with this particular element. Now, sometimes is it more avoidance than it is intrusion, and, or does, well, it, does it change over time? Well, so, so the, the, my analogy for intrusion is, and this is the idea that an intrusive thought is actually trying to help you get completion. What does that, what does that really mean? Well, if, I don't know if you ever played baseball, but. Not well, but. I know, that's right, neither did I. So one of the things you did if you were trying to catch a ball or hitting a curveball is you did it repetitively over and over and over again in hopes that practice mm -hmm. would make you better. Mm -hmm. So the idea of intrusive thoughts is that its goal is to try and help you work through that problem. Mm -hmm. But it's incomplete, and you don't know how to do it. So you get the avoidance because it's just too stressful, too distressing. Mm -hmm. The value of support groups is that it's a safe enough environment to help work through mm -hmm. those intrusive symptoms of the, of the disease. Mm -hmm. Yes, the value of, of a support group is that it provides a safe environment to work through those intrusive thoughts. And the way to work through those intrusive thoughts is by managing emotions, fear, mm -hmm. anger, mm -hmm. sadness. Yep. That's what helps through that, that, that completion. The other thing that happens is that this idea of practicing, you begin to see how others deal with the situation. Mm -hmm. It, it re helps in the rehearsal of what to do. Mm -hmm but it also detoxifies the experience. Is there a sense uh, sort of in our yes. culture that people should be able to work it through themselves? They should muscle their way through? We're, our culture is set up that, that uh, you know, the, the idea is that you have to deal with this alone. But yet the three most significant stressors people with cancer face in their fight for recovery is unwanted aloneness, mm -hmm. loss of control, mm -hmm. and loss of hope. And so this idea that somehow you're doing it alone is really counter, you know, to the actual interventions that are successful to create this sort of completion. 
And, and the context of how we got to post-traumatic stress is because how widespread distress is for cancer patients. Mm -hmm. So nearly half of cancer patients are going to be suffering from distress great enough to be really diagnosable from a, from a DSM point of view, mm -hmm. uh, so the mental codes, but also that the most you know, underreported aspect of distress is emotional distress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so because those elements are there, that's what triggers this sort of traumatic response to the disease. Mm -hmm. And so we know that that's happening when those intrusive thoughts are occurring and the avoidance are occurring. So we began to treat the distress by understanding post-traumatic stress mm -hmm. and then providing interventions that lower that. One of the most poignant stories uh, that I remember that, that helped me understand this more fully, Ken, was a woman who had multiple cancers. She had breast cancer and then ovarian cancer. And uh, she would no longer consider treatments. She had decided that it was too overwhelming to think of having to do, go through one more treatment. And we began, even though her prognosis would be good by being able to follow treatment, she, we got closer to understanding that treatment adherence was linked to this sense of intrusion of the cancer, all the treatments she's already undergone, and the idea of avoiding any context of that cancer. In the support group, there were other men and women who had had multiple cancers. And their ability to help her walk through the value of her life in face of all these illnesses helped her continue treatment and she ends up surviving five years longer as a result of that. What I would advise for people with cancer who are experiencing this levels of distress, consider support, consider the value of support groups because look, family and friends want to be helpful but they often don't know exactly the right thing to say. A support group provides especially with the professional, a safe avenue for exploring emotions, fear, anger, and sadness. Consider journaling. Consider the value of written expression, talking about your deepest feelings and fears. Also consider stress reduction, some form of reducing your anxiety and distress.